Hello and welcome, I'm Artie Lax, and tonight we've got some Modern out of Grand Prix San Antonio. Uh, this is the blue-white control deck uh, from the winning team piloted by Greg Orange, kind of a control specialist slash master. Uh, he goes pretty deep on his control deck sometimes. I know there was a Grand Prix where I was playing control, and then he won up to control by playing control with magnifying glass of all cards to go long in pseudo mirrors, which was crazy. But uh, he this deck looked pretty reasonable, and San Antonio, despite being a Team Unified event, just the way that Modern played out at the at right now, uh, if you look at the decks, there's not a lot of overlap, so basically you can just have three people on your team play three of the best decks. You know, this is the deck he chose to play. I'm pretty sure he would choose to play this or something similar to it in a uh, pure non-Modern event. So, looks good, and I've been losing to decks like this recently a fair amount, so I'd like to try it. So, to kind of go through... Um, lands 23 lands only which is maybe i don't know maybe one lighter than i'm used to seeing in these decks uh but greg is pretty heavy on cantrips not only does he have ancestral vision for the kind of backbreaking card draw over the course of a game uh but there's four serum vision some snap castle to flash back and then spreading seas uh spreading seas in these blue white decks is something that i know kyle bogmas has been a very big fan of over the last couple years and it can buy you lots of time in specific matchups that let you establish in mid-range matchups where sometimes you don't get quite the breathing room. Um, it answers various creature lands that people are playing in the format. And it gives you some main deck outs to the various big mana decks that are trying to attack you from that angle, like Tron. So it's a bit of a cantrip. Uh, it's just kind of there to hang out. But at the same time, it does just enough work. Um, it also knows four Ghost Quarters to really hammer that home against the big mana decks alongside Crucible of Worlds. So... You'll also notice that this deck is kind of heavy on non-basics that are not uh, fetch dual. So that's been a historic structural thing with these blue-white decks. And at times, they've definitely been weak to Blood Moon. Um, I think there was actually a point in time where Jeskai and blue-white were seeing play. And the Jeskai three-color mana base was just miles better against Blood Moon because it was, you know, plus a few fetches. Uh, this might have been, like, right before Flooded Strand was a card. So it had way better fetches, too. It just ended up being, like, way more likely that that deck could find all of its basics, whereas the blue-white deck didn't. This deck's a little better than that because it's Flooded Strand, but you'll see only four fetches. Um, and that wasn't a unified thing. His teammate that was playing fetches, his teammates were on Jund and Affinity, so... What fetches are you going to use that are in Jund? You know, you could play Scalding Tarn in this deck if you wanted, if you wanted blue fetches. Uh, so past the cantrips, we have... Uh, blue-white kind of removal answer suite. A bit later on counter magic, only two mana leak, two spell snare. Uh, the format is a little lower to the ground, so you want more spot removal. So you've got path and then condemn, which is kind of the backbreaker against death shadow. And then uh, detention sphere against kind of the random nonsense. People are playing big planeswalkers and stuff you got to take care of. And if you don't have a lot of attackers, uh, this deck doesn't have like blade splice or resto angel. You need to go down the road of this. And then blessed alliance, which... Uh, Interestingly, so not only is it a card against the people still playing Infect because it pro it prevents them from casting Vines of Ask, which is save their creature, uh, you can make your opponent gain four life to kill a Death Shadow. So there's some crazy stuff that can happen. Uh, mo well, I guess mostly just like really like putting them out of shadow range, but at the same time, you can also proactively use this as an answer against Death Shadow uh, in spots where the sacrifice might not be able to do something like against Lingering Souls. And then Snapcasters, the standard blue value stuff. Uh, you'll notice also uh, a lot of this heavy singleton answers really plays, or single card answers, hand, answers, um, they cascade really well into Ancestral Visions. You draw three cards off this that you want to be able to expend to trade resources, or uh, really just, when you get this small, like, there's three skills of card advantage, right? There's two for ones. Just basic two for ones where the goal is usually just chaining them till you eventually uh, get to the point where you're super far ahead. There's big card advantage like Sphinx's Rev, where really the point is just you need to survive to you cast it, and then the amount of cards you draw off it just negates everything. And then there's like single shot, big influxes of card advantage like Ancestral Vision. And the key with Ancestral Vision is once you draw those three cards, you're going to be ahead on physical cards, so you need to be able to make that matter. And that's what all of this cheap interaction is doing. You're able to make that matter in the quickest time frame possible. 
so that your opponent is out of things and you have a couple things left over. So that's why this deck is slanted this way. Um, there's only two Supreme Verdicts on the high end. There's uh, no Restoration Eagles. You don't want to be clogged up with a hand of three and four drops. Uh, you are playing Cryptic Command. The card's just the greatest. Uh, and then on your high-end kill or high-end game winners, Crucible with Ghost Quarter and Celestial is this kind of eventuality engine for mid-range matchups. You have Jace, Architect of Thought, as kind of your bridge planeswalker. Um, I'm kind of not opposed to Gideon in this slot, but that might be more of a post-board thing. In game one, just drawing cards off Jace is pretty nice. And then Elspeth is just the end-all. Like This card is still just as good as it was in Standard in terms of ending games in Modern. It's really, really absurd. Uh, I suggest, even in Legacy, I suggest you just cast this card at least once if you get the chance in an older format. Moving to the sideboard, it's a little lighter on piece-by-piece uh, -piece answers than typical blue-white decks. I'm used to seeing a lot more like wear tears and stuff like that, but that might just be the lack of red in the deck. So we've got Dispels, Negates, and Vendillion Clicks to handle combo. Celestial Purges is kind of a catch-all against mid-range, Death Shadows, that kind of stuff that can take out a Liliana of the Veil. You have a Rest in Peace against Dredge, though... Yeah, you might have some problems there. It's a little easier than it used to be, um, because the Dredge deck can't just long game Dredge Grave Troll, and you can kind of handle a Flashback Conflagrate. They can only do that probably... I mean, getting even the second Conflagrate for Lethal is pretty hard. So if you can, like, Verdict away their... That's a lot of work. You can, like, Verdict away their Narc Amoebas, and then, like, Detention Sphere, a lot of their Blood Gas... Maybe you can get to some state where you run them out of cards, but it's really difficult. Um, so I guess one in Rest in Peace is just kind of there. It's also good against Death Shadow, uh, is the other thing. You can take out all of their Delirium effects and their Tarmogoyce. You got Stony Silence against Affinity. Uh, this list specifically is going to be a little worse against Affinity than the typical blue-white deck. Some of the blue-white decks have, um, specifically Jeskai has Electrolyze, Esper has Lingering Souls. This deck has neither. So you will struggle a little against Affinity without those. Firewalkers against Burn, even though you have Blessed Alliance in the main, you need more than one card to get there. And Porphyry Nodes to kind of pick off the wider creature decks like Merfolk, Obzon Company. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this card in a lot of spots like Death Shadow, but fortunately the main deck's overloaded on answers that are good against those kinds of decks. So this is specifically there to handle uh, tribal decks and toolbox decks. So... We will see how this deck does. I, I'm excited to play something like this. Even though the lists I've been losing to have been more Sphinx's Revelation based, uh, the end game looks pretty similar. It's kind of hard to... You'll eventually draw all the cards you need. Uh, so we'll jump into some rounds. You can take a look at those both. Uh, if you're watching this on StarCityGames.com, they should be coming up next. If you're seeing this on YouTube, on the Star City Games YouTube channel, you can find that and basically all of our other videos. So take a look and... Let's dive right in.